Hi everybody, Tom Brown here for another edition of Gates of Graceland. And if you've been watching our episodes here on the web, you've seen us in some amazing places involved in Elvis's life, like inside the Graceland Mansion and also in the Auto Museum with his cars. And there's a lot of great places in Memphis you can go to experience that Elvis feeling. Lauderdale Courts, Elvis's home on Audubon Drive, Humes High School, and also Sun Studio on 706 Union Avenue. And here in the studio where we are right now, an amazing event happened 60 years ago in December. December of 1956, the Million Dollar Quartet were in this building and uh, that was a very magical night. But it wasn't just the Million Dollar Quartet, there was one more person who was a member of that. And uh, in some ways she's been cut from history, but uh, we've been rediscovering her in the last 10 years or so. And I'm so excited to welcome to the Gates of Graceland tonight here in Sun Studio, back where it all happened. Marilyn Real, it's so wonderful to have you here in Sun. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm having a wonderful time. 60 years ago, December in 1956, um, you are at the time living in Vegas and you're a Las Vegas dancer. And t t tell everybody the story of, of what happened that night in Vegas. Uh, well, we do two shows a night in Las Vegas at that time. And during uh, the period of time in between the two shows, uh, we would go down to the coffee shop, which was closed to the general public, mm -hmm. and just kind of hang out and maybe have a Coke or a cup of coffee or something. And lo and behold, Elvis Presley walked in. Well, he had been there in April and knew some of the dancers already. I was not there at that time. I was in college. And uh, so, he sat down with us and we were talking and he slid this napkin over to me <laughs> and it said, could I have a date with you tonight or some other night while I'm here? And I nodded my head, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's how it happened. And what's amazing about this, uh, this moment in your life, um, it was the beginning of a friendship with Elvis and your journey to Memphis, but this is in a coffee shop in Las Vegas and you have these amazing photographs that you've kept all these years that, uh, that kind of document that moment. And not only that, you actually have the note that Elvis slipped to you as well. Indeed I do. I <laughs> saved, I've always saved everything and I saved that also. Yeah. So what happened after that then? So Elvis you know, makes that, initial contact with you, you know, sliding that over? What happened after that? Well, he had a date with somebody else that night, but the night after that, <laughs> uh, we went out after the show, um, the late show, and we went to see the Dominoes mm -hmm. at the Hacienda, and that particular night, and then uh, other nights we hung out, we talked, we yeah went to various, uh, you know, lounge shows which were, would play after our show. Mm -hmm. What was your impressions of him as a young man? Well, he was gorgeous. We all know that. <laughs> yeah, we know <laughs> I that. I mean, he's beautiful. And he was just a really sweet, just down to earth, mm -hmm. nice, very nice guy. Yeah. He was 21, I was 19. Wow. Well, it's, it's amazing to think of that moment. And also, too, it's, it's not only then, what, how, do you, how do you get to Memphis? I mean, you get to come to Memphis to visit the family. Well, he invited me to come and meet his parents, and I had to ask my mother's permission. <laughs> and then she spoke to Elvis's mother, Mrs. Presley, and uh, they agreed that I could, could come and visit. So you had, this, you had the mom's seal of approval on, on, on this. I think that's... that's I had that's, to. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> he good. He had to, too. Yeah, that's, that's, I know. That's what's so wonderful about it. So I didn't have... Uh, we worked seven nights a week, and we would work several weeks and then have a few days off. There would be a swing dancer that would cover you. And um, so when I could have the days off, then made the plane reservations and flew to Memphis. Wow. And here we sit in Memphis again all these years later. What were your impressions of Memphis when you, when you got here with, here's the hometown boy, the triumphant hero coming home. You know, it's, it, it's always been the place that we hear that was his refuge. This could be, this was where he could be himself in this town. What were your impressions of the I city? I think he was very comfortable here. Um, we would ride around and rode around on the motorcycle and in, and in his car, and he would see the local people and they didn't um, glom onto him or they would stay back, they'd say, hi, how you doing? And hi, Elvis, but they didn't really bother him. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, that was great because he was their hometown yeah. boy. 
you know. Yeah. And uh, Mrs. Presley, uh, your impressions of her, we always hear a lot about her as a person. None of us, you know, there's not a lot that's known outside the family ab about her. What were your impressions of Mrs. of Mrs. Presley? She's a very pretty, pretty lady, mm -hmm. I thought, and very welcoming. They were very, very nice to me, both of them, mm -hmm. both Mr. and Mrs. Presley. So let's get to the evening of December 4th, 1956. Tell me about what happens that day that leads up to you parking uh, just <laughs> probably right over there in front of uh, in front of Sun. What happens that day? We were just riding around and uh, he drove by and said, oh, you know, maybe something's going on there. That's, that's mm -hmm. the studio. And so we came in and the rest is history, of yeah. course. So there's, a, there's an interesting thing that happens that evening. Sam kind of sees what's going on. You know, Carl is here, Jerry Lee is here. Elvis walks in unexpectedly with you and, and you guys are kind of, you know, greeting everybody. Sam gets the idea, he calls Johnny Cash to get Johnny Cash down to the studio and then he calls a local photographer for the newspaper to come in. Do you, what do you remember about the photographer coming in and all that? Well, he came in and that was, you know, he posed us and he posed me on one one photograph on the uh, piano and the other one gazing at Elvis which I was more than happy mm -hmm. to do. Gazing lovingly I believe is the proper description I of that. I think you're right. I think yes. I, yes, yes. <laughs> so that photograph becomes famous. The next day in the paper in Memphis that photograph is revealed. The Million Dollar Quartet was at Sun Studio and there you are on the front page of the newspaper. What did the hometown folks think? You're a, a girl though you were in Vegas you were from uh, Fresno. Fresno, California. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well I think some were shocked Mm -hmm. First of all, because you make your hometown but, newspaper, also, right? Oh yes, yeah. yes. I made the newspaper when the, the mother spoke, actually. Wow! Before <laughs> you even came, after the moms had yes. the conversation. Yes. So, anyway, the that was when the phrase was coined, actually, by the writer, mm -hmm. the Million Dollar Quartet. So that photograph becomes famous, and so many years, though, we've seen that picture back in the day and you were always cut out of that photograph. That's correct. What, what, what did you think about that? Well, that didn't bother me. I mean, I was... <laughs> you knew you were there, right? <laughs> I knew I was there and they were the, the famous singers. Mm -hmm. Now, you had that experience with Elvis here in Memphis. Um, did you see him much after that? No, I did not. We spoke, you know, a, a while on the phone and then it just kind of but, you know, drifted apart. Sure, but you did see him one more time. I saw him one more time in 1959. He was in the service and I had graduated from college and I was on a college trip mm -hmm. with, and with three of my sorority sisters. And we went to the Lido and he was there with a group of people. And uh, I sent a note over to him. Oh, this time you sent the note. I like I that. Sent I the like note. that, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he came over and, and said hi. and and sent a bottle of champagne over and we shared the champagne the girls that's a that's a wonderful end to that to that part of, of your life with 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 Elvis the, those yeah. that experience with Elvis so the years pass and the photograph becomes famous and all the careers of all the guys in the photograph you know they become rock and roll and country music history and all of a sudden then in Chicago, they're working on a musical called Million Dollar Quartet. It hasn't opened big, it's just a small little musical. And someone gets the idea, I wonder what happened to that girl. Tell us that story. Well, an article appeared in the paper, the Chicago Tribune, and it said, whatever happened to Marilyn Evans? If she's still alive, she would be 71. Wonderful. <laughs> now everybody knows my age. Great, right? yeah. Now I'm coming forward. <laughs> and, and lo and behold, one of my friends, who was my maid of honor in my wedding, lived in Barrington, which is a suburb of Chicago, mm -hmm. and she sees this picture. And she calls me and says, you never told me about this. I've known you all these years. <laughs> so I, wanna, I just want to bring that up for a second. I want to interrupt the Chicago part. That is something that, uh, from all that I've heard about you from, from family, it wasn't something that, was, that you had on a T-shirt that you walked around. This is something that, was, that happened in your life that was just a moment in your life, but you didn't really talk about it a lot. Well, that's right. It, I mean, it didn't come up in general conversation, <laughs> shall we say. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, life goes on. I had a great, yeah. a great life. So the Chicago Tribune's looking for you, your friend calls. They are. She calls me and says, what, well, they said, you know, if anybody knows where this woman is, we couldn't use the name Marilyn for the show because we couldn't, for legal reasons. 
And so they used the name Diane. Mm -hmm. And my friend, Mary, said, what should I do? Should I call him? And I said, no, 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 no. She said, okay, fine. But then my husband and I talked about it and thought, should we call or not? But somebody was going to find out. And mm -hmm. then you wonder, you know, when the phone rings, who's going to be there. Mm -hmm. So we did contact Jason George, the man that uh, wrote the story. Mm -hmm. And uh, Did you have to prove it was you somehow, or did they take you at your word, or how did that work? Well, he said, can I come to you know my hometown, Carmel, mm -hmm. California now, and interview you on a certain date? And I said, no, I'm going to be in Salt Lake at the library, at the genealogical library, because I was doing genealogy. He said, mm -hmm. well, can I come there? I said, sure. So he came, and uh, I brought my all my strap, uh, scrapbook stuff, and uh, showed it to him, and he looked it's at it. Pretty easy to figure out. You're the one with yeah. <laughs> I hate to tell this story, but I said you you know you outed me with my age, and I am older than my husband. And he said, yes, we know that. And I said, how do you know? He said, well, we found your marriage certificate. And I said, oh, he said, and your husband does not have a criminal record either. Wow. I said, what? He said, you don't either. I said, <laughs> how do you know this stuff? And he said, oh, we, we find it out. So yes, wow. I guess it had to be They do a lot of proven. legal work before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Well, we've been seeing, as we've been talking, we've been seeing some of the incredible things from your scrapbook. We're so fortunate as, as fans and friends of yours to, to see all these, these things that you kept all these years. It's been wonderful. Now, Million Dollar Quartet comes out. It's a huge hit on Broadway, wins uh, Tony Awards, and uh, at some point, um, they invite you to the show. They did, indeed, and yeah. we went to New York. It had, it had gone to New York, and uh, we were there for the one-year anniversary of the show being on Broadway. And uh, that was wonderful, great fun. They had a cake, everybody was great backstage, met the whole crew, the, right. the singers, it was wonderful. Right, when you're, um, you, when you're with your husband and you're at home and an Elvis song comes on or in your car and you hear an Elvis song, what, what do you think? What a gorgeous voice. Yeah. yeah. It, it's an amazing experience, too, uh, always for me to even walk into Sun Studio. And I know you've been here, you know, maybe one or two times in the past since that, that night in December of 56. As you sit in this room now, um, these years later, what are, your, what are your thoughts about being back here? <laughs> it's amazing. It's yeah. just amazing. Is it like it's you remember? Is it kind of like you remember? Yes, yes. I certainly remember all these acoustic tiles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sam came up with this amazing way of, of you know, put, putting all these baffles in here with these, these angles and things as a recording studio, and it's just a small space, but the amount of history that's been made here is, has, has absolutely been amazing. It's been an amazing time also to talk to you here. It's, it's almost surreal to sit here knowing that these guys are looking down on me behind me, and I'm sitting here with you all these years later. Thank you so much for being uh, well, here with us. It's my pleasure. For, for another edition of Gates of Graceland, and thanks so much, and, and uh, Thank you. you don't have to wait so long to come back. You come back anytime you want, all okay. right? We're going to go Thank recreate you. this photograph, and uh, I'm not going to cut her out of the photo this time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. We'll go back over here to the piano. Yeah. <laughs> okay.